Good morning. It is uh, so good to see everybody this morning. I hope everybody's doing well. I wanted to start out with just a reading. You've got to be taught to hate and fear. You've got to be taught from year to year. It's got to be drummed in your dear little ear. You've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be carefully taught to be afraid of people's, who, of people's eyes whose are oddly made. And people whose skin is a different shade, you've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be carefully taught before it's too late, before you're six, seven, or eight, to hate all the people your relatives hate, you've got to be carefully taught. I was cheated before, and I'm cheated again, by a mean little world, by mean little men. And the one chance for me is the life I know best, to be on an island, and to hell with the rest. I will cling to this island like a tree or a stone. I will cling to this island and be free and alone. Let us pray. Gracious God, Father, be with us this morning as we hear the message that you have prepared for us. Open our hearts and our minds and our souls and let us hear what we need this morning, Lord. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Now, if you're not a musical fan like I am, you probably don't know what I just read. You probably don't recognize the words or anything about it. It's actually a song called Carefully Taught out of South Pacific, the musical. As I was preparing this week, I was preparing to talk about peace and what that looked like in mind, body, and spirit. And as I researched peace and I kind of broke it down this week looking at different topics and, and conversations on the internet, I realized that almost just as important as peace is the opposite of peace. Hate. Now, how is that important? How does that play out? Well, because earlier this month in California, again, we lost um, a human being to a, a needless act of violence. Just for um, flying her pride flag in her own store, this person was killed. And there was other t things that went on about this that the um, suspect, in this case, um, posted all kinds of hateful messages on social media, displayed a lot of uh, jargon that just isn't um, a loving, it's not coming from a loving place um, as human beings. Now, why am I telling you all this? It has everything to do with hate, not peace. But we learn a lot about peace through the actions of hate. Our first message today is um, Jesus talking to a crowd of people. We are in Matthew 15, verses 10 through 20. And I'm reading out of the Common English Bible, so it's going to be a little bit different than what's on your screen. Then he called to the crowd near and said to them, Listen and understand. It's not what goes into the mouth that contaminates a person in God's sight. It's what comes out of the mouth that contaminates this person. Then the disciples came in and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended by what you just said? Jesus replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father didn't plant will be pulled up. Leave the Pharisees alone. They are blind people who are guides to blind people. But if a blind person leads another blind person, they will both fall into a ditch. Then Peter spoke up. Explain this riddle to us. Jesus said, Don't you understand yet? Don't you know that everything that goes into the mouth 
enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer. But what goes out of the mouth comes from the heart. And that's what contaminates in a person's God. That's what contaminates a person in God's sight. Out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adultery, sexual sins, thefts, false testimonies, and insults. These contaminate a person in God's sight. But eating without washing hands doesn't contaminate in God's sight. Our focus text this morning begins as Jesus turns his attention during this public argument with the religious leaders to the crowd who is witnessing it. He uses it as a teachable moment to clarify the law in a way that is reminiscent, if you will, of Sermon on the Mount. We can almost hear the silent, you have heard it said, but I say to you. As Jesus expands on what contaminates us when it comes to human behavior and religious practice. So again, I say to you, you have to be carefully taught. Hate. Hate stems from a place that is deep in our souls. It stems from what we learn, who we learn from, and what it is that we are taught. It doesn't just happen overnight. Now, for the life of me, I can tell you I hate snakes. Is that a different kind of hate that I'm talking about when it comes to human beings? Or is hate, hate? Now I don't, I really questioned that this week as I said, as I was thinking, you know, we use the word hate in everyday language a lot. Especially if you hang around our schools and our high schools, our youth. It's almost a word that they use like and <laughs> like it, it just it, it just comes out of their mouth more than any other word I think besides some of the slang terms that I think I've heard <laughs> now I was not raised in a, in a home that taught hate I was not raised in a home that taught to hate other people hate other things, or to even hate food. Now I can tell you I do hate some food. But again, I ask you, is that the same type of hate? So our pastor's saying no. She's shaking her head and saying no. Is hate hate? Or does it just come from a a place that's more secular, more um, accepting? more um, approved. Now what happened in California had a lot of hate behind it. Anytime there's multiple shootings, there's hate behind it. Anytime there's multiple people killed, there's hate behind it. I don't understand a lot of what God puts here on earth in the forms of hate and bigotry and some of those other terms that we look at more and more. I don't pretend to understand it all. I don't say I understand it all. There are times when I shake my head and just say, Lord, Jesus, I don't know. I don't know. This week was um, kind of a weird week for me. It had a lot of ups and downs and curves, and and there was just things in my life that um, that happened. And the weird thing was, I usually watch the news when I get home from work. I didn't even turn on the TV this week when I got home from work. Not a single day. I just sat there, almost in silence. I didn't look at my phone. I just sat almost in silence. 
I would go outside. I would go back inside. I would go outside. Come back in. It was a weird week, and I don't understand why for myself. I think some of us are in that same boat when it comes to how life treats us, how life, um, how life plays out on this journey each day and each week. You know, the thing about it is I do despise some individuals. Hate is described as a passionate dislike, is how Google describes hate. A passionate dislike. Again, I'm not perfect. I don't pretend to be perfect. I know. Such melodrama. Shocking, isn't it? But there are people that I would say I have a passionate dislike for. Now, would that cause me to go out and do harm to that individual or to those individuals? I don't believe so. I was not raised that way. Referring back to the song, I was not taught to hate the people that my relatives hate. I was taught to make up your own mind. And if you don't like that person, you don't like that person. But there were people that my dad, I can remember very honestly, that my dad disliked. And I was like, I don't know why you dislike them. I think they're pretty cool. In fact, I saw a, a, a ring doorbell video of that on TikTok um, this morning. It was a, a kid. And, and his father, and they were outside a door at a residence. And the kid was like, I don't know why we're here. All this guy talks about is his divorce and people he sleeps with and, and the financial troubles. And the dad is, you can see the energy just drained from his father at that point. Because he's like, and the kid just keeps talking and talking and talking about, he doesn't understand why we're here, you don't like him. I don't like him, why are we here? And his dad finally just, before the door opens, says, cut it out. And he just looks, his dad looks in the camera and just shakes his head. Because he doesn't know what to say. He doesn't know what to do. Everything that he taught his kid, his kid just spilled the beans to this person. Again, we are taught six, seven, or eight by our relatives. Now, there were times in my life that I was taught to dislike certain individuals or groups of people growing up. A lot of the times, they were the opposite in political parties, if we wanted to go that route. A lot of times, they were people who my parents thought were going to be harmful if um, in any shape, form, or matter for that, for that purpose. Um, but hate is a learned thing. It is passed down from generation to generation to generation. And it's hard to break the cycle. And in fact, the other thing about hate is that it physically alternates our minds. It physically alternates what we think, what we think about, how we think, our actions, it can play into our um, to our system in our body, and it allows things to happen that normally don't happen. Maybe you become in pain, physically you become in pain because of the hate that you have towards an individual. Now that's an extreme case, as I have to say, but it alters who we are. But see, the good thing is, in this passage, that we're not done with Jesus yet. And Jesus isn't done teaching us. 
because we have to be carefully taught. Jesus and his disciples leave to this gathering of religious insiders and depart for a different region, inhabited primarily by outsiders. It is there that we find the Canaanite woman. From there, Jesus went to, this is Matthew 15, 21 through 28. From there, Jesus went to the regions of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman found those from those territories came out and shouted, Show mercy, son of David. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. But he didn't respond to her at all. His disciples came and urged him, send her away. She keeps shouting out after us. Jesus replied, I have been sent only to the lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she knelt before him and said, Lord, Help me. He replied, It is not good to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Jesus answered, Woman, you have great faith. It will be just as you wish. And right then her daughter was healed. You have to be carefully here we see this Canaanite woman who in all political instances back then would not have approached Jesus would not have been able to approach Jesus uh, because of who she was um, but somehow she did approach Jesus and not from behind, but from the front. She knew, she called him. In fact, she called him son of David. She respected Jesus. That didn't always happen. But she respected Jesus. She understood who he was. And Jesus kind of treated her pretty bad in the beginning. I mean... If you think about it, he kind of blew her off. He's like, no, I don't, I don't, almost like I don't have time for you. Like, no, we're not going to play into this. We're not going to do this. He was kind of demeaning towards her, which isn't typical Jesus. But if we look at, if we, if we really look into what Jesus was doing, he knew what he was doing. He played it out. Because if we look, she says, Lord, help me. And he replied, it is not good to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Meaning, it is not good to just waste things. And she says, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall off their master's table. <coughs> Woman, you have great faith. Because she respected what he was saying. She respected what he was putting out there. He was teaching his disciples a lesson that he just talked about. Because in true Matthew fashion, the way he writes this, is there is a lesson to be taught, and then an example of that same lesson. That happens a lot in Matthew. And the timing is just impeccable. It happens, I guess. The lady was devoted to Jesus in a way that we don't always see Canaanite women being devoted to Jesus. Devotion is the opposite of hate. If you look into hate and you look at the anonyms or synonyms or whatever you want to research, all those words that mean and don't mean, devotion is the opposite of hate. Jesus was not coming from a place of hate. 
The Canaanite woman was not coming from a place of hate. They were both coming from a place of devotion. He was devoted. He was going to help her. But he first had to make a point. He first had to make a point that says, look, I don't know what you've heard. I don't want to know what you've been taught about me. But I'm going to put a stop to it. You have to think for yourself. And she goes on. She, she continues. Devotion is a noun. Love, loyalty, or enthusiasm for a person, activity, or cause. A person, activity, or cause. Devotion. Jesus is devoted to the oppressed. He was devoted to those that were in a place of oppression. He was devoted to teaching. And he was also devoted to learning, even though he knew what he had to talk, what he had to teach. He was a fully devoted human, even though he was fully devoted God as well. He was a higher power. So I'm going to repeat this song. I really, really want you to listen to some of the words. Because I think for me this week, it stemmed a lot from what I was taught what we're all taught. What some are taught more, what some are taught less. But to find peace, like I was trying to do this week, and really focus on peace, I had to break it down. I had to realize I was coming from a place that was not peaceful. You've got to be carefully taught to be afraid of people whose eyes are odd be made. And people whose skin is a different shade, you've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be taught before it's too late, before you're six, seven, or eight, to hate all the people your relatives hate. You've got to be carefully taught. I was cheated before, and I'm cheated again by mean little world, by mean little men. And the one chance for me is the life I know best to be on an island and to hell with the rest. I will cling to this island like a tree or a stone. I will cling to this island and be free and alone. Let us pray. Creator, Abba, Father, we come to you knowing 